Back here on Backyard History, we have a display of a federal soldier in the Western Theater. Welcome, and today we're going to be talking about the equipment and a uniform of a Western Theater soldier. This particular one is a Ohio volunteer militia soldier. He would be, of course, obviously from Ohio. Um, you can talk a little bit about the rifle that he is now adorning. Yes, um, this is an 1861 Springfield. Um, it was loved by the troops during the Civil War. It was rifled, had rifling, which is grooves in the barrel, uh, mini ball, which was a new, a pretty new invention. Um, basically all it did, it had grooves in the ball, grooves in the barrel, it put it down here. When it was fired, it would put a spin on it, so it would go, it would um, launch the ball um, farther, for further distance, up to what, 500 yards? Yeah, uh, yeah Five. around 500 yards. And um, yeah, um, this is the 1861 model. There was an 1842, which was just like that. It was a percussion. This is a percussion cap uh, musket. Uh, very different from the flintlocks you would see in the Revolution, War of 1812, and so on, so forth. Um, 1842, first percussion, but it did not have the rifling. 1861, big improvement, has both. Um, moving on, uh, the sling. Some soldiers would have been issued them, most likely not. This is just kind of a reenactorism. It's easy to sling it over the shoulder, carry it on the march. Usually they would also be canvas. Uh, but besides that, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the 1861 Springfield for you. And as for his headgear, he is wearing a party hat. These were common amongst Western theater soldiers. And you would see these, oh, sorry. That's okay. You would see these just because they would do more than what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a forge cap. As you can tell, the visor doesn't keep out much sun. Western Theater is a lot warmer, a lot more, the climate was a lot hotter, a lot more sun. Uh, so it keeps out that, the rays from uh, getting into your face. <laughs> the rays. <laughs> Essentially has a canteen. Let me cut across here. This canteen is in a field gray. It's not German. I, I, you get what I mean. Um, cork and is tied off with a piece of string or jute. Uh, this particular one is cotton. Um, the, you'll see a lot of them with chain um, cords. Uh, chain is not necessarily the most accurate uh, because mo there's some depots that use chains, but most dominantly they were all twine, twine or like Leather I said, cotton. Boots. Leather, cut leather was also very common. This is a leather leather strap. These are have an early war thing before they transitioned over to canvas. Uh, it but, also for canteens, it all depends on the maker. There was a lot of depots. There was Philadelphia Depot, Cincinnati Depot for the Western Theater, New York Depot, of course, can't forget them. But uh, yeah, it also just depends on the depot. Um, this this is a smooth canteen for one thing. Uh, yeah, you also had the bullet side. Uh, Bullet side? <laughs> Corrugated canteen? Corrugated. Well, yeah, that one too. Um, apart from that, he is wearing a blanket roll. Blanket rolls are uh, kind of a thing that was the replacement for your knapsacks. Uh, a lot of soldiers found knapsacks to be over in Cumberson, and that blanket rolls filled that position. They, they held everything they needed, and then they tied it all up in one beautiful roll that you sling over your soldier. You can like change it from one side to the other. Uh, um, in this roll, basically on the outside, I have my issue blanket. Um, they would either come in this color, this tan with stripes, and it would have a chain stitched US on it most of the time. Sometimes they probably didn't, but most of the time it would have a chain stitched US on the middle of it. Or it would just be the same thing, except it'd be gray. It'd be a gray blanket. I have the brown one just because I think it looks better. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Uh, moving on to his haversack. This is underneath his belt. Uh, just to keep it into position from flopping around too much. This is a can or tarred canvas haversack. These are common amongst federal troops. Um, a lot of Confederates they would have home sewn or uh, regular canvas haversacks. And with this particular one, it is tarred. It, it keeps out the ele elements a lot better. Uh, this is where you would store all of his um, rations and home goods that he would need on the field. And moving on to the belt. Again, OVM, Ohio Volunteer Militia. We wouldn't be a militia. It was, 
it was um we be infantry but instead of using ovi they usually were ovm ovi wasn't really used that much for the belt buckles and box plates which we will get to box plates so, let's get this off um cap pouch this this goes with the cartridge box this is how you know load your rifle um we'll get more into that but let's just get out of this way this out of the way bayonet it's a bayonet you know put on another rifle stab a guy um triangle pointed this was made by some french guy a frenchman a french doctor in fact yes and it would uh it was really hard to stitch now there's a rumor a myth that goes around that it was actually banned by the geneva convention I don't know if that's entirely true, but I mean, it, it still mean, you know, killing machine. So put that back in. Belt, just a leather belt with the buckle, belt holes, put it in. It's just to carry the cap pouch and the bayonet scabbard. Uh, late war, later in the war, they would put their cartridge box on the belt too. So they wouldn't need the sling, but most of the time they would still have the sling. Um, for so that's personal, preference i i do quite like the sling um i there is a reenactor in our unit that uses his puts it on his belt and it's convenient that way and it, i mean it pulls off a very light war impression that way yes um i guess i have to put that here and, uh, yeah. haversack we already went over this but this is you know it in full sling you know so now we get to the cartridge box now this i believe i could be wrong on this but 1855 i think is this model uh for the 58 caliber mini ball on the breastplate up here ohio state seal for ohio unit uh ohio volunteer unit and then ovm again like the belt we're our unit is called the 48th ohio volunteer infantry but we still have the m there just for militia just how um for example new york their belts it wasn't you know NY, uh, NYI, it was SNY for State of New York. Um, states just differed and, you know, and of course do you, this. you don't need these specific plates. Oh, you yeah, can you get could, by with U.S. Yeah, um, U.S., the um, Federal Eagle, breastplate. Federal plate. Eagle, best plate, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the basic cartridge box. A lot of the stuff is the same as the Eastern Theater. It's just Eastern Theater was a lot more polished than soldiers in the Western Theater. They were closer to Washington, D.C., therefore they could get supplies quicker. Um, we were close to some depots like in Cincinnati, but still, as we went more and more south and west and, you know, all around, it was hard to get the wagon trains to supply us. So we would be more relaxed in terms of our uniforms. We'd still keep to the regulations, but, for example, just how we went over the hat. Um, hardy hats were used in the Eastern Theater, especially by Iron Brigade, which were actually from the west, but they were put on the east. They're from... Um, Minnesota, in yeah, Indiana. Yeah. yeah, but they would use it, in, but and mostly it would be the forge cap, which yeah. you see on Gary. And with party hats, you'll find a lot that are dressed. They have the, they have the cord, they have the, the cockade, which is more just like a pin. Um, they also have, I mean, they'll have pins all over them. With the, the, your, the feather. The, they'll have a feather, then you'll have your um, plume. <laughs> you're also, some of them have the infantry bugle. Um, that steer away from that you can put if you if you're in a regiment you can put like for us you can put your numbers, 48 on it. Your numbers yeah. company letter um, but you kind of keep it to a minimum too much yeah. is much you could put it you could put a bugle in the 48 on the or if it works better with singular digits when it comes to putting something inside the bugle but you could do that with that too and i wouldn't look too over the top and it'd be pretty accurate but when it comes to putting fancy cords and all that onto it it's a little inaccurate yeah uh, moving on to the tire I think you know more about the. He is wearing a field blouse or a sack coat. These were very common uh, post shell jackets. A lot of, like Ohio, they had their own state jacket. New York had their own state jacket. Each state just about had their own state jacket, and they were shell jackets. Ohio's was a roundabout, it was a nine button. Uh, this isn't particularly a state jacket, it's just a generic shell jacket. But he is wearing a Womble White and Co. <laughs> sack coat. Uh, it's very very high quality it's one of the best out there other than like nj sakala uh or C does cj daily make sack coats yeah he makes sack coats yeah so it's one of those up there that with quality um that is adorning the federal eagle like you would see on breastplates 
Um, it has a kidney pocket, as they're called, because it is a shape of kidney. And uh, that is for the inside. Some coats, like shell jackets, like like I'm wearing a shell jacket, some of them had uh, piping around the collars. They, some of them had even some fancy velvet on the cuffs. They had belt loops that were also piped. Uh, it just depends. And a lot of those, like I said, are state jackets. Um, they could have different buttons also. Uh, the Eagle is the most common, but you could have I for infantry, A for artillery, or C for cavalry. And I believe New York state jacket actually had the New York seal on their buttons. So yeah, yeah. You could also go for that for the state jackets if you're from a New York regiment. As you can see, these this is a uh, lined jacket. They were commonly lined. In fact, they're probably more so lined than not. It was uh, something three out of the four out of four sack coats. Three would be lined. One would be done lined. I heard. Uh, okay, like I said, here's your pocket. You could put whatever you need. Your your uh, smoking utensils or your, uh, <laughs> or your toothbrush or. Whatever it is you need as a soldier on the field that you can easily access by slipping your hand into your pocket. And then on the inside, on the sleeves here, uh oh, suspender problems. All right, on the inside sleeve here, you got um, inspection stamps. This is the size. Usually, sack coats would go from it would go from size thirty six chest to a size forty two chest. They later in the war they would got bigger sizes. You know, they realized that you know not everyone was a lean, mean, killing machine. Insect vultures. Um, but this would be a, this would be a size 42. No, yeah, size 42, because it has the four marks. And then the inspection stamp. So, uh, this right here is the federal issue undershirt. Um, Confederates, um, just to get this out of the way, Confederates would just wear civilian shirts, um, checkered, striped, white, you know, whatever, just their generic shirt they would bring from home, their work shirt from home. Um, Union soldiers on the head, other hand would be issued a shirt, usually, most of the time. It would be this gray dormant flannel, or it'd be a white dormant flannel, um, white dormant flannel. Um, surprisingly, even though this is a lot ho hotter than, um, uh, a civilian shirt, which would be made usually out of cotton, some were flannel, but most of the time it would be out of cotton. This is made out of a wool flannel mixture. Um, I learned this from, uh, 11th OVC. They have another YouTube channel. It's a great channel. Um, they actually, the, by the end of the war, federal soldiers would draw and during the um, inspection, they would draw their federal shirts out because they liked it. They said it was hot in the summer, but it was a lifesaver in the winter months. And, you know, they would usually pull this bad boy out. I gotta say, it's very underrepresented in the ho hobby. You see a lot of white shirts. Actually, I have an example. I'm wearing a, a white muslin shirt that's not exactly the most accurate because it was the only one I had clean. Um, like this, you'll see this commonly. You can get these, they're not, they're not really inaccurate. They're just not you know the most it's common. a good it's a good, it's a good representation start. of a civilian shirt minus the yeah. tin buttons like a civilian dress shirt they're uh <clears throat> i mean you would see them they're not like they're not there yeah. they're just not as common as a uh checkered can, flannel or like you say the issued uh federal shirt you can get um for civilian shirts just go to any sutler they'll have like the generic checkered red blue and green shirts but if you want to get a high call a good issue shirt this is from Wamba. They have the gray dorm flannel. They also have a white flannel kit to sew. NJ Shakela, I actually believe, also has their own. And CJ Daly has some. I don't know if CJ Daly is still using, is active on his website, his, um, his shop site, but I've seen them there. And uh, moving on, suspenders, generic suspenders. As for the uh, suspenders, sorry, I didn't mean to cut yeah. you off, but he has this, no, these are generic. what, generic civilian pattern. There wasn't really, I mean, there was, I guess there was issued suspenders, but you don't really, I don't really they, think there was. They were, I mean, if they were, they were just canvas. But with these, these are what you would probably most commonly see. They are uh, just simple uh, puncture suspenders where they, they're hold, held in place by the puncturing of the material. Um, um, then moving on to the pants. So here's the, it's just a ticking leather uh, straps for the buttons. Then down to the pants. These are just generic federal issue trousers. At the beginning of the war, like really early in the war, 
these would be navy most of the time, but 1861 to, to 1862, they fully switched to the sky blue style that you know so commonly in literature and in the media. Um, I got this cuffed at the bottom because they're a little too long, and these pockets are mule ear. There'd be the side seam pocket, and then there's these mule ear pockets. Um, standard button fly tied in the back. If you want to get a shot of that. Um, but yeah, it's standard infantry trousers. Moving on to the last thing, or last section. Socks, just generic wool socks is what they would wear. These aren't really the best representation. They would wear under drawers for their underwear. Sometimes they'd, it'd be short, almost like a modern boxer, like not, not like a boxer, but be like up to here on the knee. And then most of the time they would come all the way down. Socks, like I said, just generic wool. Brogans. These are the shoe of the infantry in the Civil War. This is what they would most typically wear. Uh, leather boot laces, leather um, rough side out leather. It could be um, smooth side out too, but they're less common. Yeah, it was mostly this. Um, uh, just a hard leather sole. Fixed then, with the heel plate. Yes, heel plate. This is to add more um, stability to your heels stability so they don't to fall apart. Uh, a lot of soldiers would take nails, put it on a, um, what's it called? A cobbler shoe. A, a shoe cobbler nail them in. tool. Nail the nails in for traction. With mine, I wish I had done that because as you can see, they're falling apart. They are, they're basically- Which isn't entirely inaccurate. It's not inaccurate, no. Uh, as you would see, but I you, mean, this Especially would be, for a rebel. Yeah, well. Uh, my pants are cuffed like his. Uh, I did a based around it just to keep uh, keep it secure so things will get inside the cuff or that the cuff doesn't come out when you're marching. Um, just field uh, accommodations that soldiers would make, like sewing up things, re-sewing their buttons, making sure they're all fit, and that they don't come out on the field so they have to buy another pair or another set of buttons, uh, or making sure the pants are not dragging on the ground. Uh, inspections would be done regularly on the uniforms to make sure that they are spick and span uh nothing is going wrong with them the buttons like this he should be got for that that is not not part of regulation that and the top button just but um as for this this is what you would see commonly on the western theater for a soldier who is on campaign uh thank you john fail yes and for backyard history that is a federal soldier in the western theater